Armed with predicates, which are functions that return true or false based on an input. Validators, which are predicates that if they return false, you have a chance to know why they return false. And checkers, which are functions that know how to operate on many, many arbitrary length of validators and accrue all those errors for you. Otherwise, none of the validators return false. They return an empty array. We're going to use those to validate our inputs. And we only have one input on this, and this is the zip code. However, given the fact that the zip code is a IO operation or input output, it's coming from someplace outside of our control. So although it looks like an object here, we don't know where this is coming from. It may or may not be there. This request is initiated from Restify. So it could be from the client. It could be from a malicious client. It could be from some third party web service that's calling us as a microservice. So we need to verify if it worked or not. And the only way we can do that with a surety is by returning a maybe. So let's write some validators. Then we'll return a maybe, write some tests, and then we'll do some manual integration testing. But first, we have to have a predicate. So say legit zip. Legit zip is got to be a string, and the string has to have a length of six characters. Then we're going to create a validator, legit zip validator. Before we do that, we've got to go ahead and import our validator and checker from our predicates library. My old boss from Disney used to say, a validator, not a valid zip, must be a string in six characters long. That's a legit zip. Our check zip checker function, which for now just takes in one validator. And our maybe deal with get zip from request. So we're going to pass this uh, restify request and it's going to tell us if it worked or not. So we're going to get the zip file in the safest way possible using Lodash's get method. And it's looking on the request object for params.zip. If it doesn't exist, it's going to send back undefined, which is the default value for the third parameter. You can put whatever you want here. The reason we do this is that if I were to do this instead, go request.params.zip. If this were undefined, it would throw an exception. And that's not a maybe. That's a yes, no, and boom. So we want binary operations, not trinary. Or surprise, not binary. Additionally, I can pass an undefined here, and this will not throw. It'll just return undefined. And then our checker function will validate that it's not a legit zip. So this is the safest way to get things without having to worry about explosions. So we'll say errors, check zip, pass in the zip. And if the errors.length is greater than zero, we know we have a problem. One of the predicate functions returned false. We're going to go ahead and return that promise.reject. And we're going to go ahead and pre-fill the errors here. We're just going to join them together in one big old string. So if they want to pass that error back, we're going to give them a nice little package that they can throw around if anybody's concerned as to what went wrong. Do the work for them. Otherwise, we're good, man. So return a promise.resolve and pass in our good validated input zip that's too legit to quit. Before we implement this, let's go ahead and wrap some unit tests around this guy. So we'll export it out. We'll go in our index test, import it up top. We'll describe should succeed if good params. Create a fixture we know is legit. Restify requests are basically made up of an object. They'll have a params object attached with our data attached that we want. If it's there and you are encoded correctly, in our case, we're gonna hard code it to be so. We're gonna get a zip that is a legit zip, it's a string, and it consists of six digits. Now we can take our get zip and return it, because it's a promise, remember, and say, with this fixture passed in, should be fulfilled. One L, not two. We rerun our tests, we're good to go. And just to verify it's not there, we can verify that we see the test fail be uber sure, right? We know it always works. Verify the actual zip is legit. We can copy pasta this. Should get our zip from good params. So we can verify that the validator, if it comes out nice and clean, that we are gonna get our zip. So in this case, instead of using Chai's promise, we'll use the native JavaScript async await. And we will get the zip out from this guy. It'll return a promise, and we can say zip should equal one, two, three, four, five, six. Rerun our tests, and we're good to go. And if you want to be uber secure, we can delete one character just to verify that it does, in fact, fail. So we're good. We know that the values we're getting are legit. 
Cool, so we've got some positive and negative tests, negative tests going down. So we've got this unit tested function, fantastic. So now let's get rid of all this, get zip from request, pass in the request. If it worked, cool, we got a zip and we can actually use it, that's fantastic. Otherwise, we've got a problem here and we'll go ahead and send that to the client. And these errors will be pretty useful because they'll say exactly what happened with that particular request. Res.send, get error response, pass in the error, which is already pre-formatted for us, and we're good to go. We'll take this entirety of the Mongo function here and pass that into the then, and so far so good. We don't need to try catch anymore because we're starting to validate our inputs here around the zip, so we don't need this craziness anymore. All right, we're slowly making progress here, folks, so let's do our NPM test to verify we didn't break anything by moving code around. So far, so good. Now we'll do an npm run coverage. Okay, npm run show coverage. You still got some things to clean up, but we're slowly making progress, 69%, getting higher. Now you'll note that we didn't check the rejected from the git zip request, so we can go ahead and add that. And our then response is checked, but the actual internals for Mongo are not. Error check just to make sure our coverage is 100% on that particular function. We'll say should fail if bad params. Pass in nothing, return this function with nothing, and know that it should be rejected. Run npm test, we've got a fail for bad params. Now if we run npm coverage and npm run show coverage, go back into our area. We now are good. We've got both the success and failure for this guy. Back at 73%, so we're slowly making progress here. And that's how you take predicate functions using validators with checker functions, abstracting away your IO using maybes, in this case promises, to verify and validate your inputs. And if they're not legit inputs, actually give reasonably cool errors to your users and to yourself if you're actually consuming your own API.